This is a HeadGum Original. Many have said, this is not very well cited on Wikipedia, that when this song was released, and perhaps still, it's the longest note ever in a Billboard hit. In a Billboard in hit. In a Billboard hit. Bill Withers did it. This he sang the longest note. note. No okay, way. Okay, and you're going to attempt. I'm going to attempt to sing the same the note for the same note. length. Yeah. Is the longest note. Is the Guinness Book in the room? In Do the history them? of podcasts. A lovely day. Okay. Yeah, there's no chromatic move, though. It's just a lovely day. Oh, it's really? No are you chromatic? Gonna, yeah, are you going to sing? A lovely day. That's it. I, yeah, but don't stop. Don't start the timer till I hit the D of day. I have to sing the whole thing. Okay, okay right? Everything else. I'm so excited. This is very high stakes. Right? This is definitely helping. <laughs> Imagine you're going through a tunnel. A lovely day. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's too funny. Come on. It's not. <laughs> you chickened out. You laughed to get. You laughed to get out of it. Oh, that's the timer going off. I was nowhere close. near. Not even. You went for five seconds. God. Wow. <laughs> I'm, the thought that was going through my head the moment before I started laughing. Do you know what it was? Uh, don't laugh. No, it was. I've got this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is I'm, like I'm basically there. Yeah. This is like when you're in, you're in class and you're laughing at something that's not funny at all, but you're just laughing kind of because you're not supposed to. You're That's like, exactly right. I'm, I'm sitting in history class. I'm going to get in so much trouble, but yeah, I can't yeah. stop. You got the church giggles. I think I can do yeah. it, but I cannot. I cannot keep trying to sing an 18 second note for the rest of this podcast. We got to move on. Move on to what? <laughs> what could be? What could be more important than this? We'll come back around to it. Who could we, be more compelling? Let's set. Let's let's set the table. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Let's talk about what even is this show? What even are we doing? What here? is this show? What the heck is this show? What is this show? Is this... From the theme song, you may know this show is called Punch Up the Jam. It's a show where every week we take one of the greatest hits of all time. It could be a, a, a hit from the from the Billboard Hot 100. It could just be a beloved song. Mm. And we take that song and we make it even better. Uh, and we're very, I'm one of the hosts, Andrew Gregory. Uh, this is the, the other host, Evan Gregory. And we're very lucky this week to be joined by our third brother, Michael Gregory. Welcome to the show, Michael Gregory, also known as my brother, Andrew's brother, very accomplished YouTuber and musician, known online as Schmo Yoho, accent on the yo. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thanks for rejoining us. It's an honor to be here again. Although the first time I've been in this room, because the other time we were just... In our studio, and I wasn't a, there. You, you, you came in while I was on paternity leave twice. Yeah, right, Michael? yeah. I was helping fill in the gaps while you were gone. Yeah, yeah. We used to. People always ask us if there's another brother or another sister in the family. Obviously, in our group, the Gregory brothers, there is a sister-in-law, Evan's wife. But um, maybe not. That's not obvious, and it's confusing. Anyway, uh, I remember like when people used to ask us that. I, I would say like, yep. That's a hundred. We're a hundred percent of the gene pool. Like this is it. Yeah, there are. There is not a fourth There's or not fifth, a fourth person sibling. But I said that, that a couple years to... ago, and I was like, I don't think that's technically true anymore. Why? Because we've had kids. Gene pool. Gene pool's down a generation now. You know, maybe our specific gene pool. This is still that gene pool, but I don't know. Our, our, our genes are elsewhere now. They're we all have kids. I got a stool on that. You're for thinking a while. about this. You're like, yeah, the gene pool of our family. Maybe this is the whole gene pool. True. Yeah, I think when people ask you that, they aren't wondering about your grandparents or anything. Like, but where's your granddad? Uh, why isn't your granddad in your brother's group? Why didn't you include him? He'd have right. a lot to say about Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> right. They're wondering who else grew up in your home with you. They're wondering who are you hiding. They're, at, yeah. they're, they're wondering who else can I bring in to make this sibling dynamic even more exciting and complete. And and the answer they, is no one. They want to know if we're hiding a normie. This and is, the is there <laughs> is, is there a Frankie Jonas or a Cornelius Hansen? Yeah. You got to find out. This is the full dynamic. Yeah. We have a hundred percent of the sibling dynamic today. And what are we here to do? We're here to talk about a seriously great hit. This is one of those classics that was a hit at the time, pretty big hit, but then grew over time 
unlike so many of those hits that make a splash and then fade away forgettably, this is one of those songs that grew over time. Lovely Day is now considered to be a classic of all time. Hall of Fame song. It's on the list of the 500 greatest songs of all time by Rolling Stone. People think of this as Bill Withers' signature track, and he's like beloved figure from all of American music. Lovely Day is like even better, more ripe today than it was when it came out yeah. 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah Bill and- Withers is just hugely respected. Like many people, people, Many people see him as being an R and B singer. Like I'm not sure that's how Bill Withers would have seen himself, but you know he's been inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, he's just one of the greats. His songs age so well, and when when I saw we were doing this song, I thought how and why because if this is Punch Up the Jam in the geography of punching up, if we're already very close to the North Pole on a sphere, mm-hmm. like soon after you start going up, you're really just going down. Mm. There is no up you can go on this song. Yeah, yeah. once you start altering it, in, in any direction you move away from a perfect song is just, it's just getting less perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. going to go down in latitude. Yeah, this, this song is definitely one of those songs that lives in the Santa's workshop of mm-hmm. artistic achievement. Mm-hmm. It's at the North Pole. Only Santa's house is closer. Only Santa's house. Is more perfect. Someday on this podcast, we'll discover what is the Santa's house of songs. Where uh, also, toys. just to brag on what this song has achieved, I gotta say, whenever you become a theme song for anything, like you've really done something. Like if you wrote the theme song for West Virginia on purpose or by accident, I guess that's on purpose. You yeah. know that that the country West roads. Virginia country roads. mountain mama country roads. He's if, def- yeah, he's yeah country roads. For- if you write a theme song for all people named Caroline. You know, that's that's going to go a long way for a lot of people. A lot of people out there know a Caroline or are a Caroline. But I got to say, to be able to write a theme song for all lovely days. For all, a type of a day. A type yeah. of day that yeah, is very so common. Many types of days. You walk very, out of your house, the weather's perfect, and you just think, doom, 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 doom. Oh, yeah, you just start strutting. Yeah. Yeah, I wake up, I feel a brisk breeze. Anytime I feel a brisk breeze, really, I would say the entire month of September where we live in New York City, every day of the month of September is going to be a lovely day. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So what is it about this song that's uh, like a little autumnal? You know, that he doesn't say, he doesn't say fall, but to, but to me, it does conjure that way. Uh, I, felt, I felt a brisk breeze. Well, I feel a brisk breeze when I hear this it's song. It's funny, a lot of... Bill Withers, I mean, you know Lean On Me, but then a lot of his other songs are about unpleasant things, right? It's kind of kind of funny that he d- he has Lean On Me and he has Lovely Days. Okay, like, like, what, like what do you have in mind? Extremely pleasant songs, right? But he has uh, Use Me, Until You Use Me Up. My favorite Bill Withers, Bill Withers yeah. song, yeah, about getting abused and used. Yeah, uh, yeah he has that other song. Ain't No uh, Sunshine, of course. Who Is He and What Is He to You? Like, that's about, like, yeah, you jealousy. find your woman's cheating. And his first hit. Uh, Ain't no sunshine when she's yeah, gone. The woman's gone. Even Grandma's hands is like happy, but there's like a very sad nostalgia that Grandma is no longer there. She might even explicitly be dead in the song. I can't remember. But one, the first song on his first album, Harlem, is talking about how hot it is and how much it sucks that it's hot. Mm-hmm. So it's like we all know this is a little too hot in New York City in the summer. Even on a very nice summer day, you're kind of thinking like, would be nice if it was like five degrees cooler. Like, yeah, it's nice at 87. What if it was 82? Mm-hmm. That could be a lovely day. Yeah. No, we're already like off on the right foot here. Andrew's been really worried recently if we're doing too much hating on the podcast. You know, I- I'm squarely in the camp of like we're doing the right amount of hating and loving. Some songs are diver- deserving of either. It's okay to bring a real junker on the podcast and nitpick it. Yeah, a real junk, a-, a real junker like Lovely Day, like <laughs> like Rude by Magic. <laughs> For example. I love Lovely Day. Please, that was a joke. Please, please, please don't come after me. I'm not a hater. Like every time we touch. Yeah. A song so bad we had to punch it up twice. Yeah, I hate that song. Uh, But it's okay to love other songs. And then we go into a very difficult territory of how do we punch up this song that's already very close to Santa's workshop. This is a perfect song. Yeah. And has been recognized as such as society. Everyone loves this song. One thing that was amazing to me to read about Bill Withers. Oh, let's get I mean, into it, he baby. Has... Soul facts. Soul facts. <laughs> he has a really weird career because his career starts late, right? He escapes West Virginia. He grows up in West Virginia mm-hmm. by joining the Navy before he's seven before he's eighteen. Joins the Navy. 
he uh, moves to LA. While he's in the Navy, he gets obsessed with writing songs and singing. And he's like, I want to know. I want to know that story. I, I understand. Like, we'll probably never understand that yeah. piece of his biography, but, but that friggin' rocks. He's a teenager in the Navy, and is like, there, now's the time to start writing songs. There is a really, really good Rolling Stone profile from him from like about 2015. I really recommend you read. Um, maybe we'll link it in the description. Even um, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe highlight a couple things that are from that. That is is just a really cool interview with him. Uh, so he's out of he's out of the Navy. He decides he wants to become a songwriter. He moves to L.A. And he just gets a job in factories. He's working in factories, like at at uh, like building airplanes. He's working at the Ford factory. And by his own, like his claim, basically is like, this job was easy for me, because his job in the Navy had been an aircraft mechanic. You know, <laughs> like if you're an aircraft mechanic in the Navy, you got to be like, what is wrong with this thing? <laughs> Figure it out. Like beat on the part. Like take it off. Put on something else. We're like, now you just got these brand new airplanes. You're just putting the part on and putting it down the line, put doing it again. Like, I'm sure it was a hard job, but he was like, for an aircraft, like other people were like having to train to do this job. I was an aircraft mechanic. Okay, so, so he's, he's in his late 20s. In his factory he's job. in his late 20s, early there's working a factory job. Not even using his mental energy. Yeah. He can sit around and think about songs. Yeah, he's thinking about songs. He's recording demos on his own dime. And he eventually gets um, a demo in front of the right guy. A guy who's powerful in the music industry, um, and says, "Okay, we're going to take your demos, and we are going to record an album out of them." Signs them, and hires just one of the greatest American musicians in the history of American music to produce it. That, good news for Bill Weathers, Booker T. of Booker T. and the MGs Sick. is great move. You know, Green Onions. You know, all that, all that great stack stuff. He's in LA now. Yeah, and the he guy is, that's behind all of the hits from memphis soul yeah the other thing that blew me away in terms of like i, I guess it's booker t's idea this is very hip and cool to me is who plays acoustic guitar in all those songs on the first album that's like the hits like use me up i think are on that I'll, I'll, i'd have to double check that but the guitarist on the whole album is steven stills from crosby stills nash and young <laughs> okay like booker t jones can just pick up the phone and be like hey uh you guys are broken up right now, right? You're one of the best <laughs> guitarists and one of the biggest rock bands. Like, can you come play on this? But the absolute sweetest story, like I, this brought tears to my eyes in the Rolling Stones article. I, maybe Bill Withers is lying. Maybe he made this up. But he was like, I got off work one day. You know, I had like my lunchbox. I had like my sheaf of songs. And I like went over to the recording studio to meet all these guys. I met Booker, like I was really excited. He was like, and, and then I asked... So who's going to be the singer? <gasps> oh. like, it brings a tear to my eye for Bill to be like, I finally made it as a songwriter. Oh, baby Bill. Someone's going to sing my songs. He was 32, wow. you know, so he's like much older than um, a lot of people who were making it. And like Booker So he T assumed they were going to get some Steven, young. Yeah, yeah someone star. young, someone a who looked good. Or some pop star. Or maybe wow. they're going to divvy them up and like, oh, this song's going to be for Aretha. This song's going to be for Gladys Knight. You're singing the Bill. And he had like wow. be talked into it. Graham Nash came to the studio, who was yeah. just to hang out, and he was like, "You sound really good, man. You're gonna do it." <laughs> and um, I could totally imagine him having to be talked into it, just like being in your 30s and having a business head on, just thinking, "No, I'm gonna sing these songs that I believe are great, but then it'll flop because who wants yeah. to hear me?" And honestly, my honest opinion is that. America kind of dodged a bullet on this because that could have happened yeah. easily. And Bill Withers does not have the most like beautiful voice. He's yeah. not a Marvin Gaye. He's he doesn't have like the vocal pyrotechnics. He's a good, he's a good singer. But there's something understated about his singing, but there's something so emotive about his singing. Yes, the, there's something emotive greater, about right? his singing that makes you unsurprised that he grew up in a in that he was born in a town called Slab Fork, West Virginia. Joined the Navy at age 17, and is working in in like a aircraft carrier assembly line. Like if you when you hear Bill, Bill Withers' voice, you're like, okay, yeah, that all that all kind of checks yeah, out. With and I believe he has the same type of understanding as I do as what is a lovely day. Yeah, what what comprises a lovely? I day? I would have done the same thing because well, number one, I'm not a good, as good a singer as him, so I would that would be that would make more sense for me. But also like him, I would have been like. No, I want this song to make guaranteed money from someone who's already making a lot of money on songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But as we know, you know, 
we live in the good alternate universe where he did sing the song. Right. I'm I am I am mad at the possibility that he wouldn't have sung those yeah, songs. Yeah, you're positing like classics. if Aretha Franklin had recorded "Lean on Me" or "Use Me Up," maybe Bill Withers would have made more money in the end, just on songwriting royalties, or could have. But the way it worked out, it shook out the way you like. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would have. But at that point in history, when it hasn't happened yet, of course you're going to think it it will have, yeah. because uh, you know there are just a lot of songwriters over the years that they try releasing singles under their name and it doesn't happen. A, yeah. a lot of alternate Bill Withers, even though they're super talented, yeah. there's there's an element of luck. Uh, now this podcast is part of the MCU. This is yeah. this is getting really twisted. <laughs> Let's think about a lovely day. Mm. That's September weather. That bass line is so iconic. <laughs> so good, man. I'll just pause every eight bars or so, so we can just 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 reflect on the on the glory that that just happened. It's it's just so catchy. It's so pure. The bass line. Boom, 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 boom. But you also have this, the rhythm guitar panned over here on the left. That's just keeping the rhythm going. The whole thing comes together in this in this perfect bed of a rhythm section before the strings even come in. And this, the strings are sort of like, I don't have to have the strings in this song. This, the song would work without the strings. But it's kind of like a signal about like, this is a high production value song. Like this, this We're leaving some money on the... We're leaving some money in the, on the screen here, so to speak. I wanted to make this a five dollar segment, Evan, but I could not think of a way to do it without giving you too many hints. Okay. I'd either have to give you too many hints, and I'd lose five dollars, or it would be absolutely impossible for you. Uh -huh. But the person playing the rhythm guitar that you admire so much is Ray Parker Jr. What? Yes. The, the guy, Ghostbusters guy. The guy who sings Ghostbusters. I know Ray Parker Jr. is actually very accomplished ses session musician who yes. then was given his chance to shoot his shot on Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. But did he write that song too? Was he was he the one that got sued? Yes. For sounding like Huey yes. Lewis? Yeah. He was. Because as this very show has discussed at length, they basically wanted Huey Lewis to do the Ghostbusters song. He refused. So they're like, let's get this very talented studio musician to pretend to be Huey Lewis. To make a sound alike. Mm -hmm. And he just did too good of a job making a sound alike. <laughs> <laughs> and Huey Lewis did So here he is playing <laughs> perfectly sitting in the pocket. It, yeah. Ray Parker Jr. Oh, wow. All star studded, all star studded cast. But, I mean, there's like, if I just asked you who's the session guitar player, no way you get it. No, only I would have said yeah. Steve Cropper. This only track hint, is so far away from the only hint I could give yeah. you is like, he busted ghosts. <laughs> and then there's five dollars out of my pocket. You, you know? already said Steven Stills is playing for us, so I would have guessed that my second guess would have right. been Steve Cropper because you mentioned Booker Yeah, but T. Steve Stills, that's six that's five albums ago at this point. This is a six album Steven Stills playing. Let's first not album. talk about the alternate universe of what we would have guessed. Okay. We've already we're doing we're doing let's let's we're talk doing about too many multi day. there's too much multiverse in this episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's talk about the universe we're in and which we're experiencing <laughs> a lovely day. When I wake up in the morning, love And the sunlight hurts my eyes mm. And something without warning, love Bears heavy on my mind Something without warning. It's I actually love a little that. bit of melancholy here. Yeah. I love that keyboard, though. It's just popping in. The, the keyboard is, is mostly just, I guess, standing there, unless I'm not hearing something in the background. Just every once in a while, just going, beep, boo, boo. And then where we just stopped, it's like, beep, boo, boo, the little mm -hmm. arpeggio down. But it's so, I mean, it's just, I just love this arrangement because it just shows how much you can do with so little for some of the instruments. It's extremely chill vibes in this studio. When this was happening, I like, I mean, of course, they probably did overdubs, but I like to imagine that this is all being recorded live. And all of the studio cats are just like super appreciating what everybody else is doing, you know. Boom, 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 boom. The keyboard player is just like not even touching his instrument. He's just, mm -hmm. he's just hanging out there. Just, just <laughs> that's like why he's touching every... his instrument so little. <laughs> it's because he's 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 pointing point, around. He's, he's finger like, gunning. Ooh, he's out there finger ooh, nice gunning. Nice bass solo, like nice bass riff. <laughs> yeah. Nice guitar riff. Every he, once in a while, he's play. remembering. He's, he's just like... serving props. That's what he's doing. <laughs> he's just giving props to the other guys. Every so often, he remembers. 
to touch his Wurlitzer <laughs> with a really fresh little arpeggio. He's still got the gun finger doing it, so he's playing a few notes because he's got to be ready to come back up, compliment the other musician. Listen, mm-hmm. I want to own that a couple weeks ago, I talked about my pet peeve of songwriting when you start the song with, Oh, I woke up this morning. Mm-hmm. And you it's just it's the it's like the laziest move that almost always introduces a a, a a bummer of a boring song, and this is an exception. Just like you at the time cited John Prine as having a great exception. When I woke up this morning. Things are looking <laughs> bad. Works for me. This is another song where he used when as the way in. When I wake up in the morning, and the sunlight hits my eyes. How many songs start with the three words, when I wake or when I woke? Yeah, if it's just like, I woke up this morning. It is the exception to the rule, because if a song ends up being good or great, you're not really going to think about it too much, but whenever a song is bad and you started like that, you're going to be like, come on, they obviously didn't have an idea. They were like on a deadline, and they were just like, oh, let's see, what, what do I say? Well, I did wake up today. That's a good place to start. I had a, I had a cup I of coffee. Yeah, I had a cup of coffee. Yeah, sure. But this works. Yeah. It goes somewhere. I mean, part. I mean, the delivery. Any, almost any lyric would work because Bill Withers has this like incredibly. He's not talking. He he sounds so definitely re- singing. You can he sounds singing. so relaxed that it's almost like he's talking, but he's definitely not talking. It's just this. Uh, there's so much bit of pathos in this relaxed. Yeah, a little bit of fry pathos. Da, 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 da. If I try to sing that relaxed, it sounds dumb. Yeah, but Bill Withers accessed this superpower of relaxed singing. Mm, let's think about that. Here we go. Let's, what else is going to happen on this day? Then I look at you. Oh, doubled. Doubled that doubled vocal. Okay. Right. Now we brought in another party here. Now we're, Then I look at you. Just oh. look at you. The horn showed up. And the snare sounds good. Okay, stop there. Stop it there for a second. Evan. Yeah, yeah. Because there's one thing I've got to say about this song. Oof. Yeah, hit me with it. I'm I mean, in my spot right now. I mean, first of all, like you know, Bill Withers is almost like an outs. Like you talk about art, and you talk about like, oh, there's an outsider artist who like made it big. Bill Withers is almost like an outsider artist in terms of like he was in the navy, he was working in a factory, then he was a songwriting savant. Songwriting savant. And a songwriting yeah, somebody, savant who somebody comes heard in from the outside demo. might not might not work within the same rules that you came up with when you're at Barry Gordy's Motown or at Stack Studios. Okay, yeah. And like, and he's like the Ben Franklin of songwriters because he had all these other jobs and skills and talents. Yeah. But it's just like, who would, who <laughs> like, would do oh, this? Oh, yes, I will fly a kite as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. You're surprised. I'm a diplomat. Uh, uh, but who guess would what? just have this one line for a chorus? A lovely day. And that's it. That's the whole chorus. You can't do that. If he came into Barry Gordy's Motown office with this, Barry Gordy would like kicked him out. He'd be like, "Go finish the chorus." They're just trying to. You're being lazy. No, you need. A, I don't know. You need a central metaphor. Was is this, your lovely day like a heat like, wave, or just, isn't it? You can't keep singing the same melody. It's like it breaks. It's like just something you don't do in a chorus. But B- Bill Withers said, "Why not?" Was and this was under right. Columbia? Uh, this was Columbia. Yeah, it was. It was so Columbia somehow, team. even though he did that, it got through the dumb Columbia guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably, yeah. probably different exact. So I love the I love the writing, but I, I there's one thing about. This chorus, it gets to me. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I know Michael knows about. Mm-hmm. Because Michael does this sometimes to see if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. You know sometimes yeah. something happens to you and you realize that it's like a perfect barometer of whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood? Yeah, your own mood litmus. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's a mood litmus test where like, uh, I don't know, I wake, I wake up in the morning yeah, and I go into my kitchen and some mess from the night before, and I'm like, oh, my kitchen's a mess from the night before. Well, if I take a step back, it's like, well, I'm in a bad mood today. If I go in and I'm like, well, I have 15 minutes to clean this. I mean, great, you never love to see test. the dirty kitchen, yeah, yeah. but yes, it is a mood test. Yeah, that's a mood test. Yeah. Michael, unintentionally, I think, I think he did this maybe, I don't know why he started doing this, honestly, but sometimes it makes me so mad. <laughs> When he does it, I, I, did, I didn't so realize that. And sometimes, but sometimes when I'm in the right mood, it is so funny to me. Will you do it, Michael? Do it. Do what? Do the thing. Do the thing you do. Okay, I think. All right. Well, give me a key. We don't even know what Andrew's talking Let's about. Play, yeah. A key of E. 
by the Kia. Okay. Bring the chorus. Okay, yeah, I would just sing this chorus. Okay, I would just. Chorus. We'd be standing on a crowded subway platform, and Michael would start going. What? I wouldn't do this on a crowded subway platform. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to. I wouldn't shout at people. On a on a uncrowded subway platform, or okay, in a place platform. where there aren't many people. Okay. I'm trying to defend myself here. Yeah, I yeah, I would just start singing uh, this chorus, but I would just like go under. So I would go like, a lovely day. <laughs> and I would just like slowly go like a little, you know, sense and sense and sense. Sense are like a fraction of a step. Like okay, do flat a little and more, flat, do a little flatter. more. Give me, and give then, me you know, maybe <laughs> go a little just harder slowly. for the listers in the cheap seats. Uh, like more obviously. More yeah, obviously. More obviously off the key. All right. Yeah. A, a lovely day. <laughs> That'd be more obvious. So mm. just for just for fun, because it's a long held out note, mm. I would just make the note go go off. So you just can tell like, I'm in a great mood today because I'm laughing about it. <laughs> and I think this might have come from our dad used to. This isn't like a like uh, an express like game he would play, but just sometimes out of the blue, we would be like on a long road trip. We spent a lot of time in the car because had some family living in places like Oklahoma. Uh, so you know we'd be in the car for hours and. Um, some song would be on the radio or something, or or he we'd be playing some CD. Like let's say we we're playing the Beatles, like Mother Nature's Son, and let's say the tune, the key is "Born a Poor Young Country Boy," and then he would come in on the next part and go "Mother Nature's Son," and Dad would just like sing horribly, like on purpose, <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't warn us about this, like on purpose. I mean, he wouldn't warn us about it at all. Like, was hey, guys. Was this a litmus test for you, or was it always funny? Oh, it was always funny. <laughs> it always cracked me up. So, Michael, I mean, like, it's in the, like, the reason it's funny when I'm in a good mood is because it's really in the song. Like, when you listen to some of these long notes, I just want to say, like, that one's, that one sounds really good. The first one in this first chorus sounded really good. And the second one sounded pretty under to me. He's a pretty flat. You mean the doubled vocal? Bill Withers is singing flat. He's singing. He's really flat on it. Like, why didn't he just do a couple more takes? Why why didn't the pianist or the music director pull him aside and say, like, hey, let's take two days off and come back and let's just do the lovely days. Really, really get on the tone, Bill. Mm -hmm. You want to hit a square in the center of the pitch. Square in the center of the pitch. Maybe even a little above it, but not above. I have a hypothesis. What if, uh, what if they did that and it was too phasey because it's too exactly the same, so it, it's not as good of a double quality. Uh, there's no, there is no theory you can give me that will. Make I it. think the, here's what the warm quality of his voice still sells it. Like n n most people listen to this song and it j it just sounds fine, but it is true that the bass is hitting the pitch right in the center, and on these long lovelies, a lovely day. And it's, he's, he's, he's not like even there. Getting, he's getting close to a quarter of a step flat. He's and it's like a slide too. It's not just he lands a quarter step flat. It's like he starts and you know a little less flat, and then he's getting flatter, and you can hear it. And I, I don't know. I, I, I can't hear the song like everyone does, but maybe some people just don't hear it. I talked to one of our guests we had on, Arthur Meyer. He, he and I talked about the song one time, and he's like, "Man, the great thing about that song is how he just hits those lovely days absolutely perfectly each time." And I was just kind of like, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't hold it in. I was just like, he doesn't, he, he's flat. He goes flat on them. We're, we're going to sound he, like but, the worst Grinches on this one. Of course, <laughs> we also love the song. So we'll have to, we'll have to prove this. I'm going to post on Twitter, Instagram or something, a like, uh, like spe spectrum analysis where you can see just so like, little... this is like the bass. The bass is in tune and the vocal is south. This, it's, it's this, this many seconds. I got to say. I gotta disagree because I love the wide band of pitch, like the the fatness it brings, and I think that just anybody, um, you know, who let's say would be like a millennial or even some of Gen X and younger, like their entire pop culture consciousness has existed, let's say after the kids' bopification of music, mm. which I'm the not talking yeah, the auto tunification. I'm not talking about the two, 2010s and onward. I mean, the 90s and onward, like yeah. ever since the maybe the mid late 90s when all pop music started using auto tune, but people didn't really know it yet. So everything's exactly in the center of the pitch. And from a certain perspective, that's kind of boring. Now, I'm not trying to be like a, I'm not trying to be an opposite Grinch and be like, kids, these days the music's not good anymore. No, there's still, there's great music now, but there is a certain, uh, 
uh, perfection in singing pitches that does get a little bit boring. And there's so a, I love listening to songs like that where warmth, they have a... There's a warmth to music with inner, in, imperfections. And when I put on Michael Buble's Christmas album, and he's an, a, a, a freaking amazing singer, you can watch a live performance with him and say like, why isn't he just doing this on his album? But it's all auto-tuned to be exactly perfect. There's a mm-hmm. cold. There's a coldness to us. That they that even is... auto tune the scoops on those. But that yeah. is something those audiences like. So people, it's not. A, it's not hurting anybody. A lot of people. We talk. We've talked to people about this, and they have. They just say, "I have no idea what you're talking about." And a lot of that is because, again, like our whole pop culture existence, it exists after this started. So you don't really. You're not really. I mean, I guess if they're also rotating it with uh, Bing Crosby and Nat King Cole, maybe they would hear a difference. But maybe not. It's just the same to them. Yeah. It's a pretty grinchy thing for us to bring up, but it is also true. Will you play the two days, just those, the end of the first day and the beginning of the second day in the chorus. On this first chorus. Yeah. 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 Okay, here's the end of the first one. This one's in, this one's in for me. This is close enough. This one's starting to sag in a way that makes my skin crawl a little bit, honestly. My skin crawls. You can actually, you can hear it a little bit because it's doubled. You can hear them clash a little bit. Mm. I think what's, what I'm enjoying about the story of this song is that his day is just not that great, but then he looks at you. He didn't just wake up to a crispy breeze and feel great. The Shyamalan twist. He woke up He woke up and felt pretty bad about this day. And then he got one look at you. And the world's all right with me. The whole world is changing its perception of him. And I know it's going trumpet is so smooth mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 this one's good he got a pretty square there that's a 7.2 for me 7.2 it still makes me strut though absolutely I like that you you are strutting down the street in your own mind when you hear the song I'm shuffling down the street in my own head, when I hear this beat, when I listen to it. Mm. Mm. I got to bring up how amazing that pre-chorus is. Because I think the, pre, the pre-chorus... the pre You mean the just one look at yeah, you? Yeah. To me, it, it makes this song because the, 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 the verse and the chorus harmonically are so simple. And all of a sudden, the pre-chorus going to this different place, it kind of makes it so breaking out into the simple part... It's like more of an exclamation point where if yeah. the whole thing were just simple, then it would just be like, okay, I've been listening to like an extremely basic song. But as soon as you hit the pre-chorus, you're hitting these core. What, what's happening is the bass is playing like a, a flat seven and then the right hand, the, the chord is like a flat six, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. so you're playing these complex chords. And when I say flat six and flat seven, that means it's not even like on the scale of the original. Those key. are chords you should not even be playing. You should not even. Not they even should be out of this. bounds. But they, if Savant be, comes into the industry, he be, says, I'm playing these chords. Yeah. He, Columbia would get you canceled for this. But you're going to say, no, you suck, Columbia, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, yeah, he's playing these, these complicated chords that are different from the bass. Then the bass is playing a one, which is the E. But the harmon- the the chord is like a flat seven, and then you're playing like a minor four with a seven in it. Uh, anyway, you don't if you're listening, you don't have to know. I'm what listening this means. and I'm loving it. But then, just just, just know that it, you're you're going to a weird place, and then you come back to a very normal place with a bunch of horns and strings. But the normal place all of a sudden sounds a lot fresher when you just hit the minor four. It exactly, sounds, it sounds fresh with those brand new chords coming in on "Just One Look at You." Yeah, it would have sounded um, like I mean the song would have still been great, but it would have been a little a little more boring. And I think it's a great songwriting lesson to wh- whether you write from a, mu- a music theory place or not just to go to a different place in these different sections like a pre-chorus or a bridge and it makes the rest of your song it's like you're suddenly yeah. like breaking through breaking through a door into the sunlight yeah a lot of my writing it's like the decision boils down to like does this part need to be more different or more the same and then once like you write it different you're like does this need to be even more different or does this need to be even less 
more the same. Like with bridge and yeah. chorus writing. Yeah, and when this, you listen to a song for the first time, uh, like even if you know like the the nerdy theory stuff, it's not like you're sitting around going like, mm, flat yeah. seven. Oh, now I like this. No, it just feels good. Yeah, and so a lot it's just of like kind of like in hindsight. Training, like I don't have a lot, but it's like, oh, if I'm playing in the key of C and I know I need something different, I'm just like. Well, what are three chords I don't usually play in this key? And I'll mess around with those till I find something. But you, what if I started hitting the piano with my elbow? Man, Michael, it's, it's good to have you. You're really showing off your aural skills. <laughs> That's why I took the aural skills <laughs> class. Right? So I could listen to Lovely Day and the first 10 times just like it. And then the 11th time be like, why do I like this? Maybe. I can't believe you took a class called aural skills. Aural skills. You ha- really have to lean into the AU. You've got to lean and into Trust it. me, when we made jokes as 19-year-olds, we were not leaning into it. You know, you're coming from anthropology class. You're about to go to English class. And you got to go to your aural skills class. <laughs> Listen to some songs and, and, and try to sing them back. Did they call it aural skills at Swarthmore Evan? Was it aural skills? No. No. They would, I think they they saw the pitfalls of calling a class oral skills. Oral skills. Oral skills. Got to go hone my oral skills. Yeah, I, for me it was called ear training. <laughs> I, I think I, I think your te- to a song and say yeah, it's a D. <laughs> I think your professors might have met an eighteen year old before. Yeah, yeah, they knew about eighteen year olds. My, and what my guess is that they did, is skills. that they had called it oral skills, but they just paid more attention. Maybe they like had the door open one day right before class and heard all the jokes. As the students were pouring in, like, time to really hone my oral skills of oral sex. <laughs> time for me to go to dick sucking class. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this worth more. Professor was just like, ear training. I wow. got it. Apologies to people who tuned in to hear a really family friendly song and just yeah. arrive right at the dick sucking hey, class. We don't know why uh, Bill Withers Day was so lovely. Yeah, just one look <laughs> at you. <laughs> Maybe Swarthmore had a mole installed in the students to, to be among them, hear all the jokes. Which classes elicit the most jokes? <laughs> Oral skills. It will henceforth be known as ear training. Ear training. Because yeah, that's what we're doing. Bad day. When the day that lies ahead of me. Oh, yeah, the keyboards is doing more now. Yeah, it's a little escalation, more keyboards in here. And when someone else instead People got mad. They're like, you're just pointing, man. And Bill's yeah. vamping a little bit. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting paid the same as us? <laughs> then I look at you. Ta-da. And the world's all right with me. I just one look at you. Just one look is all said. I know it's gonna be. Okay, I'll continue my rating system here. Okay. He went high. Oh, all the way up to the E. It's not double. That sounds good to me. A... Great belt. Oh. That's a hands in the air moment. Like you're just you're cheering. Not many choruses that this changed. It. He he didn't cut it. He this didn't start again with the one. phrase. Start it over. Okay, I have to pause it. Not many so choruses what? change the melody as they as they move forward in the song. Especially right? when there's so little melody. You're right. And so what we just heard is the longest note ever sung, possibly, certainly at the time, in <coughs> pop music. That was 18 yeah, in like seconds? The, in like the hits. I mean, I'm sure there's like a song out there with a longer note, but the, in like the top 40. Yeah, like in a, in a top 40 song. Yeah. yeah. That was an 18 second note. It lasted for 16 bars. He sang, Day! And it, it was a soloed vocal, right? It's like the whole song was a battle between the two bills. They're just fighting each other in the chorus. And then one bill reigns victorious at the end of the song. The one who the other the bill, day is lovely. The other, yeah, the other bill is cast <laughs> into the pit. The one who's like, man, my day's kind of crummy. I wish I could look at her. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're two bills from the alternate universes. Only one bill can make the last chorus. And he sings a high E, not a high B. Mm-hmm. A high B isn't even really a high B. It's just a medium B. The high, the high E, the B, the B, the, the B. The B is isn't low. even the high B. It's just a medium. From B. the earlier chorus. In the earlier chorus, the B. Yeah, it's just a B. medium B. That's a medium note. Yeah, the E. That's a high E. Yeah. Spe- speak, speaking of which, belting. I love when there's a famous singer who doesn't have an insanely high voice because they are far more rare. Yes. You know he, where an E is actually high for him, but mm-hmm. he's just he's just all over the top of the charts. He's all over the movie soundtracks. Yeah, this he, is a he's man. He's got a nice baritone. Like he's maxing it out at a high E for him. He's belting it in an E. Like 
you are a, a bass profundo, Michael. Like you have a very low voice. You could belt an E with ease, I think. Like you could sing the song. And it it was karaoke. really hard for me in college, but yeah. now it's easier. But yeah, but you could go to karaoke and sing this and hit the high E. You wouldn't have to go down to the B. And he, and that's why he's the everyman. He's written a hit song that even the bass profundos, who usually mm-hmm. have no song they can do at karaoke, can go to and belt out the high E at the end of it. Okay, I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm, I'm getting inspired in this very moment to mm-hmm. offer a segment to the show. Then you get five oh! dollars. Five dollars wow, the tables are turned. S- separate from studying this song and listening to this song, completely separate from this because I was talking are, about it with my kids. Are you going to ask if I can sing an 18-second note? I have learned what the world record is for the longest sung note ever by a human being. Whether or not it's in the top 40. The Guinness Book of World Records, what is the longest note ever sung by a human being? You can each guess a time, and whoever gets closest, I will Venmo you $5. Is it prices, rights, rules, or uh, just like distance rules? I don't care. I think absolute value. This would be value. not prices, right? Absolute value rules what do you think is the longest okay, i think we should time? have to i think we should have to write down our answers because i don't want to say my answer first in anchor michael i just honor just honor system do you have a guess wait let me think there's no honor, honor system. system in the psychology of anchoring no uh, there is an honor system i wouldn't change <laughs> but just give me oh, okay, you gotta okay, give me okay. a second you to think before you, think you or else you i think will think of your answer and then on your honor you stick to your answer even after mm-hmm. the other guy says it i wonder if they had a guy there that was ensuring he was like remaining on the pitch well yeah. Or if the guy could go flat. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it's a recently held record, so I've watched Does it. Does it have to be one note? Or this is, is it just like This sing- is documented on a YouTube video. The is setting of the world record was documented note? in video. It's singing a note. And if he goes off the pitch, is it over? I don't know, because this guy did not. I, th- right, presume, I, they would have, I presume they would have given him a little leeway if he sagged yeah. or whatever, but he's pretty much, I watched it, he's on the note. Okay, I gotta guess. Okay. I won't change. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna guess two minutes and 16 seconds. Two minutes and 16 seconds. My guess was uh, three minutes. Okay. The correct answer is two minutes and one second. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Right right Andrew before you opened your mouth, I was really sure it was going to be something in hours, and there was going to be like a circle yeah. breathing technique involved. Could you circle breathe while singing? Andrew was closest. The, uh, that's explicitly against the rules in this particular Guinness, Guinness World for Record. The, for those of you who don't know, I used to be a brass player. I don't, player. Can I you trumpet. even circle breathe in singing? I know you can circle breathe on an instrument. Yeah, circle breathing is a technique where basically like you fill your mouth up with air while playing the trumpet, Mm -hmm. and while you're like puffed out cheeks, you usually don't puff your cheeks while playing the trumpet, but you puff them out while you're circle breathing, you close the back of your throat. Uh I was never able to learn to do this. It felt so unnatural to me. Yeah. You close the back of your throat, making your mouth a sealed pocket of air. Yeah. And then through your nose, you pull air in. This is so crazy to me, even though I tried for months to learn how to do it. So you're pushing out with your cheeks you breathe in you refill your lungs practicing and now. thus you can play an infinitely long note on yeah. the trumpet if you circle let didgeridoo um, play i could never do this. it yeah you play it for several minutes it. yeah by circle oh, breathing. but circle breathing is disallowed in this yeah. contest so there was a two minute and one second note held by richard fink the fourth was his note coach. loud soft or medium it was of medium moderate volume and i was shocked to see that he sang it in a high falsetto that makes a lot of sense because it's yeah. less, kind of less, less rough. air. Yeah, I, this came up with me and my kids because they want me to try for the world record, but I couldn't imagine doing it in falsetto, which you're you're usually breathier, so you would expel air quicker. I, I really? could never see it working that way. I could go three times as long in falsetto than real voice. You could. Do you think you could beat yeah. the record, Evan? Are you going to go for it? Let's see. Let's hear. It. Let's Maybe see with it. some training. Okay. Let's see your longest note. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, so now we're stunting. Set, yeah. Now we're just stunting we're on the show. We're stunting. I'm going to set the stopwatch. Okay. You set the timer. <clears throat> uh, you guys, you, you may, this is going to be longer than 18 seconds. So you may want to think of, I'm bragging in yeah. advance. So you may want to think of something else to talk about. You're going to start laughing. <laughs> you're going to start laughing. Okay. Reset. Uh, we can keep the discussion going. Well, you're going to have to cut out just this part of the podcast and play it for your kids, not play the other parts. Okay. If I go for two minutes, okay. then you got to send this into Guinness. Okay. Two minutes. Yeah. What's on camera? We'll just play like, you know, let's just play like I got one look at you. Okay. After us feeling bad about this day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. Lovely day. 
Lovely day. It's hard to talk about anything else while this is happening is this because good? it's just filling my entire brain. <laughs> is this good TV? Is this what they call good TV? <laughs> I can I can hear the sound of uh, I can hear the you sound of it. Make me laugh at the end. I probably oh, no. I've had maybe three or four seconds left. Okay, you, I would say you came in. Where, where? How long do you think you sang that note? Evan? Eighteen seconds. I think that was an eighteen second. That <laughs> you're right. Was an eighteen was, second you're right. note. You're right. It was eighteen. Seconds. That was an eighteen I second. I could hear the sound of uh, five hundred like people. To me, in internal to me, it felt like I tied Bill Withers. You yeah. Mm-hmm. You sang for eighteen seconds. And you're God as far as Bill Withers, but pretty pretty far off the world record. Oh, uh, so, why did I just do good first that? try though? Good first try, and I agree with your kids. You should keep practicing, and in a couple episodes, I think you can set the world record for longest note here on the podcast. Bring your kids. Great. We we'll, we could have as a guest on the episode I, the Guinness. I was shocked that you just started screaming the E. I was sure you were going to go like like uh, um, do the um, Richard Jenkins the fourth. Yeah, uh, Richard Fink the fourth. Richard Fink the fourth. He had a, I mean obviously he'd been practicing this for a long time. This is yeah. extremely high stakes, but his his was more like it even had a slow vibration to it that I think was intentional. He sounded sort of like this. That's secret circle breathing shit. That's he's doing secret circle he breathing. Circle breathing. He's I mean, doing a secret. He had it so dialed breathing. in. He had it so dialed in that by the end of it, the, the final twenty seconds, he was slowly constricting his body to like obviously push in his, his diaphragm, lungs to yeah, get yeah. that last to get the last five wow. percent. Just like out push perfectly. his hips up into his diaphragm, push because you can't break lungs. the air can't accidentally stop and then restart. You know, like you have to nail yeah. it. Wow, I think you can you can beat him, but I think the note you chose to sing that on it was <laughs> insane. <laughs> That's the only way I can do it. That's the only way I can I, do it. That's, no, it. That's no, the only way that you can let the air out slowly. You gotta, you gotta pick a different. You're right. Okay. I, got, <laughs> I gotta change my. I gotta change my technique to do it the Richard Fink way. Okay. Yeah. You'll get. You'll... I did it the Bill Withers way. I did it <laughs> the, the Bill, Bill Withers way. way. This was the Bill Withers way. The Bill Withers of way of singing long notes. <laughs> How long was it? Uh, it was about forty nine fifty seconds. Fifty seconds. I mean, okay. you're like. My record is seventy. Seconds. Oh wow! Whoa. It's That's a long cool. way off from 120. How though. many times have you tried since your parent, since your kids told you to do this? How many times have you tried? Once. So this is this your second try? Yeah. The first try, you got 70 seconds. Your well, the first try, they noticed it because uh, their grandmother was visiting. My mother-in-law was visiting, and it, like came up conversationally, and so everyone in the family. We had a contest, but everyone in the family just started singing immediately. Ah, and see who could hold it the mm. longest. So pure. Uh, because Nana thought that she could win because she has a really loud speaking voice, which is true. But so all the kids are Wait, out by eight else, seconds. But you know what else is tr- not true? What? Well, you know what is not true? Not Because the other thing is true. It's, it's not true she can beat you. <laughs> I have a lot of confidence in your ability to sing for longer than Nana. <laughs> so then it was just like a gag because the, all the kids are done by 10 seconds. She's done by by 20 seconds. And then I just went on for another 40 seconds beyond that so then it's a funny joke in the family and so the kids asked me to do it later we timed it once i got 70, 70 seconds. seconds that's good yeah now, i want to try but i feel like if, if i try did, right now yeah i want to try but we should probably cut it you want to try right everyone's now? gonna unsubscribe we'll, we're gonna we're gonna keep your try in but let's put it after the credits we'll do we're gonna do a bumper of just your try after the after the credits okay okay so what i will say about your guys achievements here my achievement was eight seconds Michael's achievement, I'm not going to say what it was because you're going to have to wait till after the credits to hear it. Evan was at about 50 seconds. Someone could Using have Bill way. broken Bill Withers' record. Eight, seeing for 18 seconds is not hard unless you start laughing. Yeah. And then you can't do it. You can't do it, yeah. But it's more about his iconoclastic just decision making to be like, about you know what? Choice. No one could. I'm gonna people sing could one sing longer, but they wouldn't dare. Note. And that's just part of the song. That's just part of this song. And other other people's managers, he didn't have a manager, or their AR reps, or their co-writers, or their band would be like, no, that's crazy, 18 seconds. Yeah, probably other people even were trying it in the studio, because all these singers, they love singing. You know Steve Perry is out there singing a 30-second note mm. in some take, 
and then the 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 label guy went in there and just whispered in the engineer's ear and they just cut it right yeah. off. But the the wonder here is not that he sang for 18 seconds. The wonder is that he wrote a song where he was like this needs an 18 second long high E. That he dared to do it. It needs it. That he this Neil Armstrong Even if it's a little flat. Even if it's a little flat. Yeah. Honestly, the 18 second one was pretty was pretty yeah. good. Sounded good. Yeah. It's one long note for a man. It's a giant note for mankind. Once he's belting it out on this high E, once he's lifted it up there, that's where we live for the rest of the song. And he's just declaring, just belting out to the world, it's a lovely day. Here we go. The bass and the horns are like filling in all the spaces. To say the drums age so well too like the kick pattern i mean you, you can see why this this is one of the songs that doesn't get lost to the sands of time they're just great sounds like the sound of this of, oh really flat on that one really on the last one so really flat like why finish with a flat one but the kick because and the already are you sure it's not so the doppler good. effect of the, the song fading out yeah they, i mean the, it's the, the 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 volume effect Oh, it is the Doppler effect because to accomplish the fade out, they put the band on the back of a flatbed yeah. and just drove it away. Flatbed truck drove it that's away why and made the whole band go flat when it That's why it. the the sound is getting quieter, but also it's getting lower because of the Doppler effect <laughs> as the truck races away. To do that's how they did every fade out before the, the digital effect. era. Putting the band on a flatbed truck. Yeah, before we mm-hmm. moved into the digital era, we didn't have that technology. You'd have to drive the band away. Or the engineer takes the microphone and runs. <laughs> and you have to roll them down a hill because otherwise the, the engine will make too much noise. Yeah. The hill I, think, I, think, I think he was just flat, guys. I think he was just flat on the long, last one. I think he's just running out of breath he's after not, belting these incredibly not, long he's notes. He's not running out of breath. I mean, he's proven that he is a man with a lot of breath and breadth. It's just like if you're singing 20 high notes in a row, some of them just aren't going to be quite right maybe all the time. Just go back to the studio one more day. Fix the. I mean, what? Honestly, it was less of them than I remember. I think my memory has been corrupted by Michael's bit, where Michael goes, "A lovely day." <laughs> there aren't not there. Michael's bit has made me think they're all flat. There's only maybe like three to four of them in here where I'm like, "Ooh, that one just really gets under my skin." Yeah, listening back to it today, so it's redeemed it a little bit. But what if those three to four didn't get under my skin? Mm-hmm. And what even if... the high, when he goes up higher, I honestly think those are better, the high E ones, because he's like really pumped himself up. He's like, got to sing that high E. It's some of the earlier ones that are on B's that are like just really sag for me. And really... I'm surprised Dad didn't corrupt your memory of every single song by doing that car game. Doing the car game. Of singing every song off key. I'm going to oh, defend man. this this song to my dying day. That note is ex- exactly where it's supposed to be. On every time. And it sounds every good. Every time. Yeah. yeah. And you're you're one of the most famous people in the world at making notes be on the right pitch on or off tuning. yeah and you're saying all of them are right yeah they're, they they wow. are right because they are what makes the song sound so good wow that's a real i feel like that's a real bill withers attitude to just sort of be like you know it's yeah. right i'm kind of i'm with michael on this one although i, I, hmm. I i'm agreeing with you that sometimes bill withers sings the note flat but i'm with michael that like the warmth of the song makes the whole thing work. Mm. It's in the right palette. Bill Withers is mm. creating a lovely day for mm. me. I have another mood litmus test for you, Andrew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see I can tell I'm in a great mood because that was funny for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't even have to fake it. Sometimes I laugh when you do the slot bass, but I'm just I'm faking it. Yeah, it's you're crying act. inside for sure. It's an act. Yeah, but you're today mad. I laughed. Yeah, and good. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell when you're faking it. Uh, yeah, We've known each other a long time. Yeah, when your laugh has barbs at the end. We've known each other a long time. Oh, I know, my friend. Uh, uh, so think, how are we going to punch this up? I, I think we song. have enough information for sure, and we definitely have some issues that, that like this song is, is inside Santa's workshop at the North Pole of songs. And once we start to move away from it, every direction is south. Mm-hmm. Every direction you could walk away from this song is south. So we definitely have... Uh, one of our our toughest tasks to date, hmm. um, or easiest go... easiest tasks if you just acknowledge that failure is your destiny and you just 
plow ahead. Yeah, just Thomas Edison style leap into your first failure so mm. you can try, try again. Yeah, what's that chess word? The chess word where every move is a bad move? Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, when you're checkmated, every move is bad. I don't know. There's, there's some French word for it or something? Mm, I think it's German. It's, yeah, like, it's probably It's Russian. like a Zugswing. I was like, oh, I'm really Zugswing. I'm really in a Zugswing. Mm. You have to make a move. That's the rules of the game. You have to make a move, but any move you make is yeah, this making your position worse. Is, is a Zugswing. I think it's a Zugswing. To make swing. the this least bad choice. choice. I'm just going to say it's a Zugswing and hope I'm wrong because we need more corrections. Guys, if we said anything wrong in this podcast or any other, send us the corrections. I really like doing them. I don't know why. Okay, we're back. When we made a punch, and what you have to do in a case like this, where we're all sitting here just being hunky-dory and happy about this great song that we love, is instead of disassembling it and writing a completely new thing that improves it and makes it, say, for example, less rude, instead what you have to do is find out what is it that people love about this song? What is it that everyone is loving about Lovely Day? And do more of that. And do more of that. that Make is a it way. even more lovely. Even more lovely, even more great. And so I present to you the punched up version of Lovely Day. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. So fresh. Still in a vibe. What hath you wrought? What have Still you Still in done? the pocket. A lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> You get right to it, baby. Wow. Oh, baby. You didn't even have the string escalation. <laughs> it's so, you get right to it, man. It's so good. You didn't even have the other chorus like Here it comes. Beat. He's going to take a breath. He didn't wow. take a breath. <laughs> I didn't hear the loop. That was a clean loop. Wow. <laughs> How oh, long will this good, go? Man, yeah. <laughs> Send this to the Guinness Book. Everyone and yeah. <laughs> that one note that everyone loves. When you hear this song and it gets to the belty part, everyone says, "Wow!" <laughs> I'm confident this is the first ever. <laughs> oh, the backing Bill track Withers. changed, right? The backing. Oh, we're back changed. to the verse. Yeah. The yeah, band went back to the oh, verse, right, but Bill's okay. still holding it here. This is the first ever. Yes, yeah, Bill there it is. is remix. Listen to the chord changes. This is really tasty over the pre-chorus. Use your hip pre-chorus. Use all your aural training, Michael. Yeah, my aural training. The E really (laughs) works over those chords, though. And we're back to the second chorus, and there's only one note happening. This is the first ever Bill Withers remix that will be released, (laughs) and people won't want to go back and listen to the original. And we'll say, this, this is the remix I needed. This is the one. (laughs) <laughs> oh, so good. This is a great song to prank the playlist I have, with. I'm all, my, all sense of time is gone for me. I don't know if we've been listening to this for two minutes, for one minute, for five minutes. We're a minute and a half into the one note. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this still hasn't broken the record of two minutes for a note. It's, broke, it's broken the record for my feelings. Uh. Okay, here, I put, in, I put in something special for you, Michael. Okay. Right here. Oh, it's the reverse Doppler effect. <laughs> wow. I feel like we just ascended into the heavens. Wow. Ooh. Oh, it felt good to listen to it. That's an incredible job. Oh, Is that the like... length of the original song, what we just listened to? No, it's actually a little bit shorter, but I did ensure, mm. I did ensure that the length of that song, the punch-up that we just listened to, resulted in Bill Withers now singing the longest note ever sung by a human. Mm. That, was two, that was two minutes... And five seconds. I do think wow. we should have made it longer. I think we should have made it full length. <laughs> we should have gone the full. Like you know how, like when the you full three minutes and forty five seconds of the finish, original level. When you day. get like you finish a deep laugh and you finally are like, <gasps> but you c- kind of know in your heart like I'm that funny thing is gonna keep happening or happening again, and then I'm like really gonna <laughs> like I'm really gonna lose it. I was yeah. getting right when you went to the fade. I was like getting ready to just have tears streaming down my face we gotta go full 345 when we put po- let's post the full 345 to the patreon full okay 345 okay we have the two minute version 
I'll post this on the Patreon too because pe- yeah. people need to have every possible length every of possible Bill Withers singing we've this. Got to do the full three forty five, and I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to cry tears down my face. We do post all all the punches on our Patreon, patreoncom slash Gregory Brothers. It's the best deal on the internet, and you're going to be able to get <laughs> the three forty five. <laughs> Yeah, you need every link to from Bill Withers. You could be pranking your significant other in a great way with this song when that intro comes in. Everybody knows what's coming. I gotta say, when you, in punching up a perfect song to get worse, that got much, much worse, and then it went so long, it started getting better to get almost mm-hmm. as good as the original song. Mm-hmm. I felt the same way. Almost, you know, it got close to that Arctic Circle again. If we had another just... minute and a half, I'm telling you, I think it would it would go all the way to Santa's house. It would go into Santa's bed. And then it just levitate off the roof of his house like Rudolph, above the North Pole. It's going over the Falkland Islands. It's going all the way back around past the worst point. It's coming back <laughs> up again. The latitudes, you know. <laughs> How many latitude jokes can we make? Or really yeah. just latitude facts? That song's been punched up. I, I feel like we've given you a little bit too much latitude. In <laughs> too latitude too, too much latitude. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll stop it with the latitude. That's going to be your new test. your new test of anger. That that should be my litmus test of you is making that joke about latitudes because that's a really bad joke. Yeah, but I don't think it would ever make me angry. <laughs> just make you bored. Yeah, it would that, just make me bored. That joke is so bored. It would just make me unsubscribe from you in, <laughs> in real life, just like I made people unsubscribe from yeah. this. Unfollowed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're coming to the end of our podcast, and uh, like we do every week, we are going to wrap it up with a little segment we call Walkin' Music. What is your walkin' in music? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, walk. yeah, yeah. Mm, walking music. You have walking music? 50 Evan? seconds later. Yeah, I brought Yeah, I brought something. Let me see. Uh, my scenario is, uh, let's say I woke up in the morning, the sunlight hit my eyes, and I started thinking about all the bad things that are going to happen to me today. How everybody else that is my uh, rival at work seems to be getting ahead of me. <laughs> this day is not going to be lovely. And then I get People one. Named we Andrew. Rivals? Are we your rivals at work or are your rivals at work like other YouTube channels? I would, in this scenario, I work at an airplane factory. Perhaps, let's just say, and the other guys in the line are getting ahead. You know, they uh, were greasing the wheels at the union or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, the, my day's not looking too lovely. And then I get one look at you. Things mm-hmm. start to look up. My gonna, day becomes more lovely. Are you going to play the 345? And now I'm just walking version? into my evening where I've had a lovely day just because of you. And I think, baby, let's go on a date. I've been thinking about you all day. It made my day lovely. And now... I want to spend the night with you. This little this drum machine's hip. This is. I usually don't dare play a walk-in song from the same artist that we just Every talked about. But this, I want to spend the night by Bill Withers off the same album. It just seemed like the perfect end to a lovely day. This Latin groove right in the pocket, so fresh. But Mr. Jones. Who's going to come and sing the song? <laughs> With you. <laughs> oh, Bill. Bill, you Bill, get to sing the songs. the songs. Hey, that's it. I want to spend the night by Bill Withers. Andrew, did you bring one? Okay, this scenario is I've just come up these stairs at the northwest corner of Union Square here in New York City. So I'm on Broadway and like 17th, right mm-hmm. by the Barnes & Noble. Yeah, perhaps you're on your way to HeadGum. Yeah, and there is a really annoying woman dressed as Wonder Woman who uh, appears to be... Some sort of carnival barker for some sort of company that's trying to take some of my money, and she's like, "Hey, do you have do you have some time? Do you have, do you get a con ed bill? Do you do you receive a con ed bill in New York City? Hey!" And as I as I turn to sprint away, this song starts to play. Hey, you get a con ed bill, don't you? Everybody gets a con ed bill. <laughs> I can see the slow motion pigeons flying away as you run through Union Square to get away. Then people books, are playing chess. My books, like my laptop is like flying out of my backpack, but I just I just gotta get away. Yeah, you get freeze framed. Ironically, I actually don't get a con ed bill. It's weird, but I don't. I don't get a con ed bill. But no one believes me. When people ask me if I get a con ed bill and I say no, they think I'm They think you're lying. They think I'm lying, but they're like 
You get one. Yeah. You get a Con Ed bill. I just need a minute of your time. No, my building gets the Con Ed bill. This classic song really is making your scene very cinematic. Yeah. I like the way you've laid this out. But who's caught in the trap here? In your, in your scene? Who maybe is, this is our... Who's in the trap? You? I'm in the trap. I'm in the trap because you know when you're in Union Square and you're running away from one person that needs a minute of your time, what are you running straight towards, my friend? Someone else who's like got a Greenpeace vest on and they say, excuse me, sir. Can I have a minute of your time? I love Union Square. I love it. I love getting off the Best train in Union Square. New York Park. Best New York City subway hub. But when you're there, you're caught in a trap between all the people asking for a minute of your time. That's well, when you got to take your briefcase, bundle it like in your jacket, and be like, my baby's napping. <laughs> <laughs> my baby. Uh, that's a great out. Good idea, Michael. Did you yeah, it would look weird to be carrying a baby in your jacket, I guess. More like you're a kidnapper than an actual dad. Yeah. But Okay, uh, let's envision a scenario in which uh-huh. I've been hired as a motivational speaker at a high school. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to run out onto the stage and say stuff like, keep your mindset in the grind set. <laughs> because if you assume you make an ass out of you and me, uh-huh. okay. and if you guys just graduate, if you go buy a house, that's an asset. And then if you NFT the house, <laughs> then you're going to have an extra asset. You can sell that NFT <laughs> for seven figures before you even sell the house. Mm. Use that to have a second mortgage, an Airbnb. Keep your mind set in the grind set. Are they, is this what they're You're teaching in high schools? This. this is what they're teaching in our high schools today? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mostly don't remember don't do drugs. Yeah. That's that's what I'm going to say. I mean, maybe maybe I won't get hired again after this. This is just my mindset. Your first, this is your first this It's is your, your first, first You just take the paycheck, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Well, you yeah. take the paycheck. Then you make an NFT of the paycheck. Yeah. That's two paychecks. <laughs> Michael's mindset absolutely is the grind set. <laughs> <laughs> so right before I come out, I just pick a song that goes zero to 60 so people can get instantly hyped and they hear this. What's up, guys, and welcome to another motivational speaking event featuring yours truly, uh, Morco, Morco Benvolio, me. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about how to hustle harder than everyone else. I don't think Morco would really pick this song. Maybe this is a hybrid of, of, of Morco and me. I like it, man. It's it's adrenaline. It's adrenaline, but it's also sunshiny and upbeat. You know, you you can't be playing the sad stuff, and you definitely can't be playing stuff as controversial as metal to come out and go too hard for the high schoolers. Yeah, and if I jog out, I gotta pick a song with like no buildup. And this will give you some time to kind of like punch the air, do some flexing, like an improv team. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I would be like one of those guys I like jog out and I like jump in place I do the dance which is really just jumping When people are like, hey, you want to go dance? Well, you know they're just going to jump Yeah, Come on, man Like, yeah. I know the type of music that's playing at this event What's up, guys? Whether you like it or not, you're all entrepreneurs <laughs> <laughs> And you're all building a brand every day <laughs> And I want your brand. your brand to be a graduate. Okay, that song was called Wake Up by Ozma. I love that song. It's a great pick. Great pick, Michael. Great pick. I'm excited to get it into... There is a Spotify playlist. There's a couple of dueling ones from fans, from us. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some Spotify playlists out there of all of the walk-in songs from us, from our guests. At least the ones that are possible to listen to on spotify we've yeah. had some they're so obscure they're only on we've SoundCloud. had a couple people that are like emailed us an mp3 and are like i downloaded this from limewire in 2002 please play it and it's like as it was off a mixtape it never made it to spotify it's amazing yeah yeah well that was very motivational to me michael yeah I, i'm mm-hmm. feeling like i'm in a rise and grind for the rest of my day i mean it's almost evening here but i'm like maybe i should just go home and do some work you know open up adobe premiere Edit some videos. I'm going to rise and grind, and I'm going to make one episode of this podcast every freaking week. <laughs> I just realized how bad lyrically that song is as a, as a walk-in song, and I, it, just, it just reminds me how lyrics blind I am to songs because You're I know, I know a lot of people are like this, where your brain is just stays blind to the lyrics for like the first few dozen times you listen to a song, even if it's like, you're like, this is my favorite song now. Oh, I wonder what it's about. 
You know what I mean? I, I think that sounds <laughs> that sounds ridiculous to a lot of people to to have that notion to even not even consider what it's about before you've picked it as your favorite. Yeah, but, but I've you, done that for a lot of songs. You weren't learning about lyrics and oral training. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're learning, about, learning about the chords and, and the training. notes. Yeah, yeah. I, it, that reminds <laughs> me of when. So I was obsessed with like at one point, and and still there's like one of the greatest intros ever. Uh, the Jackson Five song "I Want You Back." I just it was one of my favorite songs, and it's pr- I probably heard it like a hundred times. And then I was like, "Oh, what's she saying in this song?" <laughs> yeah, what's and this then song about? I was like, "Wait a minute, this this protagonist who's singing this song is a jerk. Like, what's this <laughs> what's what's this guy's problem?" <laughs> Yo, uh, he's, uh, he's a child, and he's a child. Yeah. I I can excuse a, a child for being a jerk because you know it's it, not like they're a thirty year old jerk. If you ever want to become obsessed with the lyrics and nitpicking the lyrics of songs that you love but that you've been lyrics blind to for your entire life might i suggest becoming the host of a podcast where you look at the lyrics of songs every week you have to analyze them all you have to analyze them every week yeah yeah, yeah. but michael lovely you. lovely day is a great example because i never really uh you know i just thought it was about a lovely day and then today we really dug into the lyrics and it's really about how any day can be lovely when i'm with it's, the hypothetical it's about you part of the day is bad you. part of the day is bad like the part where he woke up, that was bad. Yeah, yeah. the sunlight hit his eyes. He didn't sunlight like that. Blasting him in the eyes, yeah, blasting him in the eyes, and he's thinking about how the day ahead is going to stink. Yeah, so everything but changed. I forbid you guys to end the podcast yet because I have a surprise. What? what? I was wrapping it up. I was I was one <laughs> sentence away from wrapping. I'm <laughs> oh, no. about to talk about your you Twitter handle. You can tell it was segueing. <laughs> no, I have a little surprise, which is that I punched up this song again. So far up, it went way down and made the song way worse. <laughs> By taking the song and adding another song and making, uh, really ruining both songs. You blurst it. I was, it. Just, I was sitting around, I, I blurst it. I thought, what genre and song is like the opposite of you this? Did this? You did this with Just the Two of Us, the Grover Washington Bill Withers song, and yeah. that was uh, Just the Two of Us. With Wake Me Up Now, With right? Evanescence. Yes. Wake yeah. me up now. Yeah. And we did both directions so you've, of the So punch. you've ruined another... I ruined another Bill Withers Bill song. Withers song. I thought, what is... What did this poor the, man do? The opposite. audacity to come on our show and do a punch down. Uh, so <laughs> like, is, you're not going from the North Pole to the South Pole. You're going from the North Pole to hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the song is going. All, yeah. All the way down into space until oh, so you, you achieve it. the star, which is hell. Uh, so I thought, what is the... You know the 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 antithesis of this. It's got to be number one, uh, not chill at all. Bill Withers, like very energetic chill. yet chill voice that conveys a lovely day. I got to pick something unchill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And number two, it's got to be very precise and tuned. And what 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 genre do I think of with really precise tuning? Pop punk from the two thousands. Oh, uh, I was sure you were gonna say Nova Brado Christmas. <laughs> no vibrato. He has vibrato sometimes, probably. So it sounds less tuny because there's actually, you know, the the wave is oh doing this gosh. instead of this. If you're singing, so if you're doing this, ah, and I know Michael Bublé doesn't do that, but that's that's the sound. That's like the sound doing this. But if you're going like ah, uh, that's like straight tone, right? So yeah, I was like, tone. what is the most straight tone tuned I'm, vocal I can find? Something I'm like Good Charlotte <laughs> or like Green Day. I'm terrified. I'm going to make you so mad. <laughs> Let's hear it. I can't wait. Let's hear it. Does Evan have it? I snuck it onto there. Okay. It, yeah, it's called A Lovely Day MG. Okay. Punch okay, down. Okay, here we go. This punch down. Yeah, punch down, down the jam. It's not every day somebody <laughs> yeah. can come Usually on a show and surprise comedy, us. You're only supposed to punch up. You're only supposed to... This is the to exception. attack those above you in social standing, but now we're punching down. Here we go. Yeah, it does sound like punching down. Mm, I like this. Yeah, song. yeah. I'm like not gonna mess song. with the iconic bass line. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave the iconic string. Oh, my skin is crawling already. I'm so nervous. This feels nervous. good. This feels too. fine. I'm so nervous. We're fine. We're swimming in the water. Oh no, wait till the pre chorus. Listen close. (laughs) 
Uh, it maps so good over those weird chords. <laughs> Get ready. Hold on to your seat. Yes. <laughs> Bill Withers is still in there. Lovely day. Lovely day. And he's like on the flat three, even though they're going. <laughs> This is supremely stupid. <laughs> I just love how precise the. Ah! I can't sing that note. Ah! It just keeps going. <laughs> this is, this is, the song keeps going. It doesn't stop. This is my favorite part, I think. Even although, if anyone is listening to the podcast that knows how I can get the actual isolated stems, I can make this way better. Because all the vocals were mashed together. I couldn't separate them. All the lead and background vocals yeah. were smashed together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, when the hook hits. <laughs> it's so horrible. Bill Withers' rhythm section making everything work. I'm making sorry. Fall Out Boy sound great. Hey, they already sound great. I'm sorry to both of these bands for ruining both of these songs. <laughs> Just two supreme songs. <laughs> you know, they're songs of an era, of two eras. Oh. And they're both made so awful by this. Oh, <laughs> I stand for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you but made I, it much worse, but it, but it was a blessing and a curse. It was a blur. So, oh, man. I'll, I'll give you guys the file. It I, was delicious. I would love to, like, I just want people to surprise people with that track and see how mad they get <laughs> you must be so mad right now can we save this i'm, I'm not and, gonna make it out of here this and put it on the show patreon go we'll put it on our patreon because then because you could have both of these and you could surprise someone at your house by playing the punch up with the longest note in, in human history and then they'll be expecting that so then the yeah. next time you go you could surprise them lovely day beat comes back in and it's fallout withers <laughs> I mean, Sugar We're Going Down was like the song of that era. And I got to say, like, I really want to make this, I really want to make that even better. When I say better, I mean worse, like more clean. Because I couldn't get the, like the vocals I got were all mixed together. So I couldn't make it as good as I could. Yeah, the lead as vocals as I could. is there mashed up with the, you can't separate it from the Yeah, and vocals. when they do the double octave, that's why when I'm I'm tuning it over the, um, the borrowed chords, which they don't sing over chords like that, so I yeah. had to move them around. Yeah, like, I can tell you were doing a lot of lifting to make that work with the yeah, all the scoops. Just one look at you pre-chorus, and I had <laughs> to find I had to find an unplugged version so I could separate the singer from the ah, like all those suspended those great backgrounds they do in Sugar We're Going Down. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, you don't need to get into all the weeds. I'm just begging. I'm pleading. Any listener of this who happens to be um, a, a member of Fallout Boy, a mix yeah. engineer for Fallout Boy, a friend of them who can ask, please, please, j just send them the isolated vocal takes. Yeah, so anyone, I can make that as horrible as anyone possible. Anyone that is between zero and one degrees removed from Fallout Boy that's listening to this show, get in touch with us. Are you Fallout Boy's garbage man? Can you go through their garbage? Find the master <laughs> tape, the USB stick. Yeah, find the USB stick that has the stems on it. Then we could really take this one up. I don't know. It's already pretty. High. It's already pretty high up, man. That, that's that's another very Saul Goodman thing. It was on the street. It's a public place. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> these multi-track masters uh, are they're in the public domain now. I just found them. I found Saul them in Goodman the alley. Saul Goodman got away with it again. Yes. Oh, I, can't, I still can't talk. I'm, I'm still reveling in I'm how horrible it is. You nailed Andrew right I in the still funny can't bone. Talk. Just this is this is even funnier to Andrew than his own long note <laughs> that made him laugh. <laughs> yeah, this so yeah, this episode I felt I feel bad for being so boring this episode because I just love this song that I just want to praise heat praise on the song. Yeah, but does, I feel like liking just, the song make you more boring maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but just giving you this one contribution. I'm gonna faint when I try to stand might be up. worth it. You nailed it, man. You nailed it. Next time we'll we'll bring you back. It will, it will bring you back for a song that we all hate. Good. Use your aggressive feet. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you. Uh, when we have you back, all. we'll have a hate fest. 
But sometimes we have to have a love fest here on the show. You know, we did it today, <laughs> and it resulted in the rarely seen double punch. We did it. Let's punch it. Punch it up the jam. Punch it up. Wow. You've been listening to Punch Up the Jam. That was a Hidgum original. A lovely day. Beautiful. Is he going to beat 50? That's the question. I don't care about two minutes, 15 seconds. Just is he going to beat Evan? You're rooting for him to beat me. He's cycling like Richard Fink IV. He's got the Fink method dialed in. Think about, think about crushing your diaphragm with your knees. I'm getting pissed. About 41 seconds. <laughs> oh, you were close to taking that one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was Evan? Like, close to 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, you're pretty, uh, you were pretty, pretty close, man. <laughs> some practice you can make it. That was great. Am I red? The Michael's like, first sweat. Let's go red. Sweat. Uh, oh. yeah. Woo!